What's up, everybody? I'm going to do something a little different uh, as to what I normally do. I normally do a couple run-through videos, but this is going to be a um, little tutorial. This is mainly for beginners, by the way. Uh, I am going to go over a couple new things that they have added in their latest big patch, but for the most part, this is for beginners. So, what you're going to see now, when you start a game, is that screen you just saw maybe 10 seconds ago uh, that, that just tells you, hey, we're going to start with a quest. Normally, they throw you into the world and, you know, make you figure it out on your own, and they don't do that anymore. So now, they're gonna give you a quest that just sort of helps you get on your feet. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through a couple of those things here, just to help you get a better idea of what the hell you're doing when you get thrown into this world. So I got a pretty decent, um, for my, in my opinion, I got a pretty decent starting location. There really aren't that many houses, but this specific area, it's sort of run down, all the buildings are decrepit. It's, it's great in that you're almost guaranteed a good amount of water and food to start the game if you know where to look uh, the biggest issue is there aren't that many small stones you, you're gonna find yourself punching as I punched you're gonna find yourself punching the ground um, you're gonna make the first axe and then you're just gonna you're just gonna start just hitting all the the, uh, the grass on the ground honestly you're gonna get enough for the gloves hat pants shirt and shoes that you are supposed to be making so I'm, uh, I'm also just going to do a little extra gathering here. Um, I don't know. I, I, I grab always wood. To begin, you want to grab wood, stones, um, nests, as you saw very early on where I grabbed those feathers, and uh, rocks. For the most part, you're going to want to pick the rocks up off the ground to start. But if you're in a place like this and you already have a stone axe, you just beat the ground. You'll get some sand that you don't really need, and you'll get wood for making more axes. You want to make as many axes as you possibly can to get your skills up so that you make higher quality tools quicker. Because the, the more high quality tools you have going into raiding houses and stuff, the faster you can, you know, get into that house, raid it, and get the heck out and move on. Uh, as you saw there, I just drank a beer. The beer is great early on because it helps you keep your energy up high and continue moving very early on. Uh, you also want to look for places that have coolers like this. If you're in this specific location, look for coolers because they have key food like pies and stews that may smell bad early on, but they provide you with a good amount of wellness as opposed to the chili can that's in the third spot on my toolbar. The chili can that provides you none and takes away from your hydration. So I, I'm just making the wooden club here. It's nothing all that special. Just search for it in your in your toolbar, and then it'll tell you you need five wood. You craft it. You're done with that. Uh, the arrows, bow and arrows, is extremely important. I'm glad they added this. Most people would just use a stone axe. You don't want to use a stone axe for combat. You want to use bows and arrows. You want to stay far away from the zombies because the zombies can do multiple bad things to you. Um, one is infect you, which can turn into something awful. I've never experienced it because most of the time you, you have, you know, the, the ability to cure it. Uh, they can also make you bleed out, which no matter what your health is, you are going to bleed until you patch it up with a band-aid. Um, and they can also stun you and just beat the living hell out of you, which all three things are terrible. So here I am. I'm just continuing to, you know, scavenge for supplies. Uh, you'll see that I just got a bunch of just random junk. You want to collect that random junk, you want to scrap it. Because that gets you some scrap iron. The scrap iron is extremely important later on in the game. As you can also see, I have a bunch of, like, hats and stuff. You want to use the hats. Because those keep you cool in these kind of environments, which are kind of hot. Now I'm going to do a little hunting. You don't want to go hunting after everything early on in the game. Because meat makes you smell. Right here, I'm going, I'm going after a chicken the way hunters go after chickens, and that is beating them with a torch. Me hunter, me kill chicken, me take its meat and food and feathers, and I have accomplished that! Look at the burning pyre that is chicken! So, I've killed a chicken. That's probably one of the only things you can catch early on besides pigs, but pigs don't provide you with anything useful other than uh, hide and meat. But the meat smells early on, and you want to kind of avoid that. I killed this chicken so I can grab a whole bunch of feathers because feathers are extremely important in making arrows. Feathers are hard to come by unless you're looking real close for all that. So I also made frames because it tells you to make frames. Frames are the most important thing to build a base. I'm just doing this to fulfill the task so I can get my skill point and move on. Um, I'll show you about frames a little later on. 
But uh, early on, what you really want to focus on is making a ton of arrows and just being able to defend yourself while maintaining a distance. And the last couple things they want you to do is make a bedroll, which I make, and then I place and I immediately pick up because there's no point in, you know, making a bedroll. But you want to get these quests done. You want to be able to get that skill point and you want to be able to move on from this beginner's tutorial. Now, the last thing is to build a campfire that's really, you can just make it and move on. There's, there's absolutely no point in, you know, waiting until you have a base because just, like I said, get that skill point. Get it over with. Get it off your screen. You're good to go. Finishing everything will reward you with a skill point that you can put into any old stat. Uh, just, you know, just put it into whatever you want. In my opinion, I would save it for more important stuff, but put it in whatever you want. So that's the basic tutorial. Uh, now we're going to move on to um, just kind of finding a house, getting settled in, moving past all the basic stuff. So the, stu the, the house you see on the left is what me and my friends call a forge house. It's the house that we really, really like to move into because it comes standard with a forge that I will show you later. So what we normally do with the house is we put a wall around it, we put spikes around it, both of which I will get into in a second. But I just wanted to show you that it, we start off with it being like three high, and then just having whatever kind of spikes that we can afford to have, so to speak, uh, put around it. And this is this is sort of what it looks like. I did show you before. I'm going to make it a little more obvious here. Uh, it has a cobblestone bottom with a wood top. It's very distinguishable compared to all the other houses because no other house looks like this in any other way. When you go inside, it has this forge right here. Uh, it, it really, no other house has something like this. It saves you from having to, you know, build it yourself which takes two iron pipes and a bellows, which takes another two iron pipes and 20 animal hide, all of which you need to find out in the wild. It would take you very, very long. Like the short iron pipes are not easy to come across and you'd have to build it yourself and it, it can be a pain, honestly. So now we're gonna move on to improving the wall. Um, what you really wanna do, you wanna have the three high one, the three high wall that you have here up until a night seven because there are spider zombies that can climb over the wall and it's just not good unless you have a roof. Um, so what I'm putting down here are cobblestone frames. It's exactly what the rest of the wall is made of. Uh, as I'll show you right here, it's improved with cobblestone. You, uh, you create it using, you create the cobblestone using clay and stone. It's very, very basic stuff. And then you use the, the wood and the plant fibers to make the frame. So everything is found in nature. It's very, very accessible. It's not like anything that you need any special skills for. This is what clay looks like. Like everything else, I've shown you where wood, grass, and rocks are. It's very, very open. And that's what clay is. It's just there in the ground. It looks very different. It's very distinguishable from the normal ground. It's very easy to find. So this here, this is, I'm going to show you how to make a farm. It's very, very basic stuff. Like, um, so when you dig dirt, no matter what kind of dirt you dig, it all ends up being called fertile dirt. If you want to, uh, if you want to make it into the other dirt, you, you can craft it, but everything turns into fertile dirt up until that point. So you, you want to uh, you want to turn it into fertile dirt. You want to dig it out. You want to put the fertile dirt back down. And the fertile dirt is what you can use to plant your seeds, uh, be it corn seeds, uh, blueberries, you name it. Everything needs fertile dirt. Uh, the other thing that I didn't show you yet is spikes. And spikes are very easy. You just you just Google or <laughs> Google. You just search for spikes, and that's it. You upgrade it. It takes. Uh, one wood the first time you upgrade it, and then 30 iron the next three times you upgrade it. And that's that's pretty much it. So now I'm going to show you uh, the mine. This is our per my personal way I like to mine. There's a toilet in there with uh, a mirror or something. I always get rid of it. I dig straight down. You want to go down far enough to where you're far under the rock because it's very easy to accidentally cave your house in if you don't go down far enough. I did that in one of the worlds. It was very embarrassing. We lost all our stuff. Uh, so right here, I'm just showing you, you can mine a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you can mine lead, you can mine coal, you can mine rocks, you can mine nitrate powder, you can mine iron, and sand. You can get the occasional sand from gravel. All that stuff is found in the mines. It's all very, very useful. It's stuff you really need. So what you really want to do is get a mine going early on. That way you can upgrade your spikes out front. Now I'm going to show you what, you know, what it looks like in the end. But first, uh, if you look way over there... There is a, a screamer zombie. You want to avoid those at all costs. That, you, if you hear them scream, you need to make sure they're dead because they can spawn hordes if you don't kill them quick enough. Uh, right there, it's just making normal noises. That's the noise it makes just to let you know that, you know, it's there and not to go outside and maybe hide. 
Uh, it did not get the scream there. If it screams, it is a very distinguishable noise, and you need to be, you know, worried that a horde shows up. You want to look around and check to see if there's a bee, because the bee will be a telltale sign a horde is coming. So this is pretty much what the wall looks like. It's just cobblestone right now. It's very, very basic stuff. Um, oh, I did patch up the front of it with frame. I used cobblestone frame up until I got this stuff called rebar frame. Frame helps in multiple ways. The first, it blocks zombies. Uh, it's, it's, uh, just like the rest of the wall. The difference is you can shoot through it, you can pick it up, and it's very, very, very sturdy. I would, I would honestly say you want to use rebar frame because it's the sturdiest of all frames. And, uh, like I said, you can just pick it up and put it down, you can walk in, and it's no big deal. I also like to make these little watchtower things. I like to put a spotlight in it. The spotlight helps at night. Uh, you can't really see it here because it's, you know, noon in, in daytime. <laughs> and it's it's useless right now. But at nighttime, it helps you see for miles. It helps you see hordes coming and this and that. So this, uh, this is one of the newer things. Like I said, I, I am going to talk about a couple new things. This is newer as of this patch. It's called a workbench. And what it does is you can craft basically twice as fast. Like right here, I'm crafting... 200 cobblestone rocks in my inventory. You can see it going on in my inventory. I'm adding rocks and up there I'm also crafting it in the workbench. So it does some of the work for you and it, it's really really useful in that sense uh, If you if you you know don't mind foregoing a little experience or you can use it to scrap stuff like if you have a whole bunch of um, I don't know brass car radiators for example that take a long time to scrap throw them in that thing It'll get scrapped and you won't have to waste your, your inventory space. So what I'm making here is cement. All you have to do is put rocks in a forge, melt them up, and then you can make cement. Cement is used for concrete mitts. As you can see there, it takes sand, stone, and cement. You can also make sand. If you don't have enough sand, you can make sand in that little cement mixer right there. And uh, you, you make concrete. And concrete is used to upgrade your wall past the cobblestone. As you can see here, some concrete mixing and the workbench are both skills. They take 10 points to make, and it's, it's not that bad, honestly. And as I, was, as I was saying before, concrete is used to upgrade the cobblestone. It's a lot tougher. It's 6,000, but it should be noted that when you initially make it, it's quote-unquote wet, wet concrete. It looks like that, and you have to wait a while for it to harden. It's two distinguishable things. So right here, what I'm showing you is, depending on what the settings are, there will be airdrops. Also, don't break your leg when you jump off the wall. Uh, there will be airdrops, and that's what you see there. They have a they have an orange smoke trail, whatever. You, you, you just want to follow it. You want to get those crates, because when you get to those crates, you get to open it. You get to open it, okay? And um, you usually get, like, a decent, a good gun part, some medicine, and the occasional schematics. Schematics are great because not everything, not all of the recipes can be learned through skills. Like, you also have to do that. Uh, you have to find these schematics just to be able to make stuff. And something I didn't tell you before is when I was killing the chicken, um, I harvested it with a stone axe. That's not the most efficient way to do it. You want a knife, something like that. You can find a book for the knife, and you get a lot more stuff from it than you would hitting it with an axe. And the last thing I want to show you, the, the last brand new thing is, are called challenges. They're like quests, except you find them on zombies, so it's more of an incentive to, you know, loot all the zombies you kill. Because you might find that, or you might find a treasure map. Two brand new things, something you really want to check out in this game. Uh, the challenges reward you with skill points that are harder to come by when you're a higher level. And the treasure maps provide you with basically new crates. They'll, they'll give you the occasional parts that you really need. So that's pretty much it. Uh, hopefully you learned a little something here and there. This is me killing a deer because, you know, I'm a murderer. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed something and I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.